Okay, I'm going to talk about koalas, which are one of Australia's native animals. Uh, it's a marsupial. That means it uh, develops in a pouch. In the mother, it has a little teat in its pouch. So the koala babies are born very small and they crawl from the opening uh, where they're born up into the pouch and latch onto the teat. Okay, uh, and I'm talking about koalas because there are some people who unbelievably think koalas are fake. They're not, they exist, they are real. Okay. So this is a cladogram of koalas and related animals, obviously. Uh, four legs, cineomorphy, cynapidomorphy, okay. These are koalas, see, pouches, kangaroos are off the air, placental mammals, that's us. They are not placental, they are they're mammals, but because they have mammary glands, which is back here. Okay, live birth, yes. But they live in pouches. Okay. So that's just a cladogram and some related animals. Okay, just so you know where they fit in. Uh, koalas are called Phasocophoritus cinerus. Okay. Koalas of native Australian marsupials that are arboreal, as in they live in the trees. Okay, they live in eucalyptus trees uh, primarily. And they're the only extant, which means existing, representative of the family. Phasocolacitidae. There you go. Closest living relatives to koalas are wombats. Okay. Evolution of mammals. Uh, the evolution of mammals has passed through many stages since the first appearance of their synapsid ancestors in the Pennsylvanian sub-period of the late Carboniferous period. By the mid-Triassic, there were many synapsid species that looked like mammals. The lineage leading to today's mammals split up from the Jurassic. Synapsids from this period include the Dryolecetus, more closely related to extant living placentals, that is, and marsupials than to monotremes, that would be like the platypus, as well as Ambro, 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 more closely related to monotremes. So there you go. It's just a picture if you can see that. This is more mammals um, and where they fall into the scheme of things, okay? Showing sort of some of the links there. Eutherian link lineages, okay? Uh, this is later the Eutherian and Metatherian lineages separated. The Metatherians are animals most cl more closely related to the marsupials, while the more while the Ethereans are those more closely related to Pithilus centels. Okay, so that would be, yeah. And, okay, Proto-Therian mammals and there's monotremes. Therian mammals, okay. And then marsupials, Ethereans, okay. Since... Jeremiah, the earliest known Eutherian, lived 160 million years in the Jurassic. This diversion must have occurred somewhere in that same period. After the Cretaceous Pliocene extinction, which was a big asteroid, okay, coming down, and that's what you can see. After the Cretaceous Pliocene extinction event wiped out non avian dinosaurs, the birds being the only surviving dinosaurs, and several mammalian groups, placental and Placental and marsupial mammals diversified into many new forms and ecological niches throughout the Paleogene and Neogene by the end of which all modern orders has appeared. Okay. Synipsid lineage. The synipsid lineage became distinct from the Saurusid lineage in the late Carboniferous period between 320 and 315 million years ago. The only living synipsids are mammals, which is us as well as koalas. Okay, so we're mammals. While the sauropod, sauropods give rise to the dinosaurs, and today reptiles and birds, along with all extinct amniotes, are more closely related to them than to mammals. All right. Primitive synapsids. Primitive synapsids were traditionally called mammal-like reptiles or 
plesiosaurus, but are both now seen as outdated, disfavored paraphyletic terms since they were not reptiles nor part of reptile lineage. The modern term for these stem mammals and sometimes proto mammals or para mammals. Okay, so they're called proto mammals or para mammals sometimes. Permian period, it's a different period, it's about 255 million years ago. Throughout the Permian period, the synapses included the dominant carnivores and several important herbivores. In the subsequent Triassic period, however, a previously obscure group of sauropsids, the archaeosaurs became the dominant vertebrates. The, mammal, the mammalia forms appeared during this period. Their superior sense of smell, backed by a larger brain, facilitated entry into nocturnal niches with less exposure to archosaur predation. Nocturnal lifestyle. The nocturnal lifestyle may have contributed greatly to the development of mammalian traits such as endothermy and hair. Later in the Mesoic, after theropod dinosaurs replaced rocktiosaurians as the dominant carnivores, mammals split into other ecological niches. For example, some became aquatic, some were gliders, and some even fed on juvenile dinosaurs. So there you go. Evidence from the fossils. These are some koala fossils, if you can sort of see that. Most evidence is from fossils and a lot from DNA. Uh, for most of the fossils of the Mesozoic animals and the intermediate animals were rare, but since the 1990s there have been quite a lot of uh, finds, especially in China. Okay, so there are now lots of fossils where they weren't before, but there are now. And there'll be more even as we explore further, but there's a lot of fossils now and there's DNA and other evidence, okay? Molecular phylogenetics. There is relatively new techniques of molecular phylogenetics have also shed light in some aspects of mammalian evolution by estimating the timing of important divergences for modern species. When used carefully, these techniques it's often but not always agree with the fossil record. Memory glands. Okay, so all mammals, including us, and we're mammals, have memory glands. Uh, these are koala mammograms, which are in their pouch, but we have ours on our chest, and other mammals have these sort of different places, but mostly chest-ish area. These are sort of koala chest-ish sort of area. Um, mammary glands are a signature feature of modern mammals. Little is known about the evolution of lactation, as these soft tissues are not often preserved in the fossil research. Most research concerning the evolution of mammals centers on the shapes of the teeth, the hardest parts of the tetrapod body. Other important research characteristics include evolution of middle ear, erect limb posture, a bony sedentary palate, fur, hair, and warm bloodedness. Marsupials. We're placental mammals, but kangaroos and wallabies and uh, wombats and uh, koalas and whatnot are marsupials. Marsupials are a diverse group of mammals belonging to the infraclass Marsupialia. They are primarily found in Australia or Australasia, Wallacea and the Americas. One of the defining features of marsupials is their unique reproductive strategy where the young are born in a relatively underdeveloped state and they're nurtured within a pouch. Okay, because they're born quite small. Okay. Living marsupials. Living marsupials encompass a wide range of species, including kangaroos, koalas, opossums, or possums in Australia. Opossums is a word for uh, America's possums, we call them in Australia. Tasmanian devils, wombats, wallabies, bandicoots, amongst many others. Each species exhibits distinct adaptions and behaviour suited to the ecological niche. Okay, split between placentals and marsupials. We are placental mammals and marsupials are koalas. Marsupials constitute a clade stemming from the last known, last common ancestor of extent, means living. Metatherians, which encompasses all mammals that are closely and more closely related to marsupials and placentals. The evolutionary split between placental marsupials occurred at least 125 million years ago, possibly dating back to 160 million years ago in the mid 
Jurassic Early Cretaceous period. Marsupials develop in a pouch, okay? Characteristically, marsupials give birth to relatively undeveloped offspring that typically reside in a pouch situated on their mother's abdomen for a period. Okay? Where are they distributed or where are koalas distributed? You can see where they live in Australia, um, areas with koalas, sort of eastern Australia, forested areas. Presently close to 70% of the 334 extant, which means living species of marsupials, are concentrated on Australian continent, including mainland, Tasman mainland Australia, Tasmania, New Guinea, and nearby islands. The remaining 30% are distributed across the Americas. So this is in Australia, but there are other um, marsupials across the world too. All right. Where does the word marsupial come from? The word marsupial comes from the marsupium, the technical term for the abdominal pouch. It is in turn borrowed from the Latin marsupium and in ultimately derived from the ancient Greek, which I'm not even going to read all that, but meaning pouch. Evolutionary history. Comprising over 300 extant, now remember extant means still living species, several attempts have been made to accurately interpret the phylogenetic relationships among the different marsupial orders. And this is one of those. Okay. Studies differ on whether died il did elephomorphia or for Falcit uberculatea is a sister group of all other mammal marsupials. All right, well, there you go. Australian marsupials, which is us. So, as you can see, wombat, koala, sugar glider, kangaroo, possum or opossum, wombat, wallaby. You can't even read that. Kusu, Tasmanian tiger, numbat. Though the order microbiotheria, which is only one species, the monotie monotie is found in Southern America, Morphology, morphological similarity suggests it's closely related to Australian marsupials. Molecular analysis in 2010 and 2011 identified microbiotheria as a sister group to all Australian marsupials. So there you go. Uh, however, the relations among four Australiodelphid orders are not as well understood. DNA. DNA evidence supports a South American origin for marsupials, with Australian marsupials arising from a single Guandanan migration of marsupials from South America across Antarctica to Australia. There are many arboreal Arboreal, so arboreal just means tree living species in, in each group. The term opossum is used in Afri America species, although possum is common used in Australia. Okay, just as I said that before. Ancestors of marsupials, the largest, the ancestors of marsupials part of the larger group called metatherians, probably split from the percentiles during the mid Jurassic period, although no fossil evidence of metatherian is known from this time. DNA and protein analysis, the time of divergence of the two lineages have been uh, estimated to be 100 to 120 million years ago. Fossil metatherians. Okay, these are some of the fossils. Fossil metatherians are distinguished from eutherians by the formation of their teeth. Metatherians possess four pairs of molar teeth in each jaw. Where eutherian mammals, including true placentals, never have more than three pairs. Earliest known metatherian, well, okay, that's not a picture of one, that's just a picture of something like it. Using this criterion, the earliest known metatherian is thought to be Sinophilus cesarzi, which lived in China 120 million years ago. So obviously, this is not it, it's just a picture of like a little sort of sort of metatherian that's, you know, doesn't matter. Anyway, however, Sinophis is related and reinterpreted to be an early member of eutherian. The unequivocal oldest man with metatherians is now 120-year-old million fossils from Western North America. Okay, so there's 
say, there you go. Studies. Studies provided, a 2022 study provided strong evidence that the earliest known marsupial was a delta, delta theridium known from specimens across the Campanian age of the late Cretaceous in Mongolia. The study placed both the delta theridium and Puka Dolphius as sister taxa to the modern day, uh, modern large American opossums. Marsupials spread to South America from large, from North America during the late during the Pliocene, possibly via the Aves Ridge. Northern Hemisphere metatherians, which were of low morphological and studies species diversity compared to contemporary placental models, eventually became extinct during the Miocene epoch. When marsupials came to Australia, marsupials reached Australia via Antarctica during the early Eocene around 50 million years ago, after Australia, shortly after Australia had split off. It suggests a single dispersion event of just one species more likely relative to South America's uh, a relative of South America's Monto de Del Monte. Yeah. Okay, so this is how we sort of they sort of came to Australia, as you can see from the diagram. How did they come to Australia? This progenitor may have rafted across the widening but still narrow gap between Australia and Antarctica. The journey must not have been easy. South American ungulate and Xerian remains have been found in Antarctica, but these groups did not reach Australia. Okay, so they probably came across rafts of trees, which sounds likely, yes. Marsupials spread out. In Australia, marsupials radiated in the wide variety seen today, including not only the omnivorous and carnivorous forms such as present in South America, but also into large herbivores. Modern marsupials appear to have reached the islands of New Guinea and Sulawesi recently relatively recently via Australia. Well, there you go. DNA studies. 2010 analysis of retrosposone insertion splits in nuclear DNA of a variety of marsupials have confirmed all living marsupials have South American ancestors. We've talked about that before, but it's confirmed. This is just confirming that. Uh, the branching sequence of marsupial orders indicated by the study puts did dil didelphimorphia is the most in the most basal position, followed by Puka tuberculia, then microbiotheria, ending with the radiation of Australian mammals. There you go. Terrestrial marsupials. There you go. In Australia, tracental terrestrial placental mammals disappeared early in the Cenozoic. The most, re the most recent known fossils have been 55 million year old teeth, allowing marsupials to dominate the Australian ecosystem. Extant, which means living native uh, Australian terrestrial placental metals, such as hopping mice, are relatively recent immigrants. Okay. Genetic analysis does suggest a divergence, as we've already covered at multiple times now, about 106 million years. Okay, so I'm not going to go into the chromosomes because that's irrelevant. Dip diprotodontia from two forward teeth is the largest extant order of marsupials with about 155 species, including kangaroos, wallabies, possums, koala, wombats, and others. Extinct means no longer living, include the hippopotamus size diprotodon and the cyclosome, the so-called marsupial lion, lion, which would be probably also Tasmanian tiger, maybe. Living Diprotodontus. Living diprotodontus are, are almost all the herbivores, uh, as were most of, the, of those were now extinct. Okay, so all the living ones are um, pretty much all herbivores, as were the ones that went extinct. A few insectivorous and omnivorous are known. 
and Potoridae are the most unique among the vertebrates in the being largely, largely fungivorous, which means they eat fungus, but these seem to have risen as large recent adaptations from the mainstream herbivorous, which means, you know, herbs and stuff, lifestyle. The extinct thylose colindentes, marsupial lions, are the only large group to have exhibited car carnivory on a large scale. Diprotodontids are restricted to Australia, uh, restricted to Australasia, I should say, which is sort of here, as you can see. Earliest known fossils relate to the late Oligocene, but the genuses are certainly lie earlier than this. Genesis lie earlier than this, as large gaps occur in Australia's fossil records, which virtually no fossil record at all in the geologically active New Guinea. The great diversity of known Oligocene diprotodonts suggests the order began to develop diver, diverge well beforehand. There's one known fossil of the Diprotodontia relates to the Lake Oligocene about 223 to 28 million years ago, and the earliest identical species is the Hyasprinodon Bartholomai from early Miocene. I think that's an example, but don't quote me there. Classification: only until recently, only two suborders of Diprotodontia were noted. Vombat forms, which encompass the wombats and koala, and Phalingia, which combined all other families. A scientist, Kurtz and et al., which, among others, which is a study, split the families into three suborders. In addition, the six Phalingia forms families were split into two into two subfamilies or two superfamilies. The macropodiforms are probably nested within the Fagliera forms, although whether they assisted to the Phlegorintheodia or Petaduria is debated. Okay. Phase Coloc Phas Fascolorcitidae, yeah, from meaning pouch bear, is a family of marsupials of the order Diprotodontia, consisting of only one extant species, extant meaning living, the koala, and six well known fossil species, with other six less well known fossil species, and two fossil species of the genus Kubo, which, whose taxonomy is debatable, but are placed in this group. Closest living relatives of these are wombats, which comprise the family Vombatiae. And the record of this family dates to the Middle Miocene or Late Oligocene. Fasciloarcticus continued is a genus of order marsupials with one extant living species, the koalas, which is the first close Fasciolactos. Cinerus, an uncommon animal Australia, several extinct species of the genus are well known for fossil material. These are all, also large tree dwellers that browse, browse on eucalyptus leaves, as does koalas. Okay, they eat eucalyptus leaves. Okay, going on about this continuing, uh, Phascloarticos, which I can't say the name, it's a genus of largely arboreal, as in living in the trees, marsupials that are specialised in the eating of eucalyptus which is a breed of tree or breeds of trees, type of trees, species of trees, I guess, a poor quality, poor quality and potentially toxic food source that is unavailable to most other native mammals. Okay, so koalas pretty much just exist on eucalyptus leaf. The extinct species are presumed to have similar diet and habitats in the, to the modern koala. The largest Australian folivore, which is succeeded by even more largest Philoscrius citroni. Okay. Tala koalas is almost absent. They don't really have one. An unusual characteristic for a tree climbing mammal, although other anatomical features are well suited to the habitat. Okay, like its claws and hands and paws, or its front paws and hind paws and claws, that's how it hangs on. 
Now, some resemblance to the wombats, a large family of terrestrial marsupials, which are allied with koalas. Mm -hmm. Where does it live? Found in coastal areas, as we said, um, in Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, and South Australia. It's easily recognisable by its stout, tailless body and large head with round, fluffy ears and large, dark nose. Description, well, obviously, we just talked about that. We'll talk about it a bit more. Their body length of 60 to 85 centimetres and weighs from 4 to 20, uh, 15 kilograms. Fair ranges uh, from silver grey to chocolate brown and koalas from northern populations are typically smaller and lighter colour than their counterparts further south. Koalas live in eucalyptus woodland, so they like to live in the woodlands um, and they inhabit open eucalyptus woodland. As the leaves of these trees make up most of the diet, this eucalypt diet has low nutritional and caloric content and contains toxic compounds that deter other mammals from feeding on it. But koalas have adaptions to eat eucalyptus leaves, okay? Koalas are sedentary, as in they lay about all day. <laughs> Pretty much they eat, sleep and poop. All right, koalas are largely sedentary and sleep up to 20 hours a day. They are asocial. So sometimes they'll hang about in small groups or with their joeys or when they are mating. But for the most part of the time, they sort of solitary with, they might have other koalas nearby, um, as in like, you know, like near, near on other limbs close to them and stuff like that. So they are mostly asocial, okay? They're not really sociable animals. Male koalas are bigger than females, so koalas are sexually dimorphic. Adult males communicate with loud bellows that intimidate rivals and attract mates. And males mark their presence with secretions from sink glands located on their chests, which I think would be that. Koala joeys, okay, koala babies are called joeys. Being marsupials, koalas give birth to undeveloped young that crawl into their mother's pouch where they stay for the first six to seven months of their lives. Okay, they're fully weaned after about a year. And you can see a little joey there. All right. Koala predators. Well, the biggest one are humans, obviously, because of our traffic and roads and deforestation and cutting of trees that we do in Australia, which is a shame. Um, wild dogs and cats, obviously. Um, and viruses, chlamydia is becoming a real problem for koalas, um, as I said, chlamydia so, and the koala retrovirus. Okay, so few natural predators, but dingoes, so these are dingoes, are introduced from about 40 to 60,000 years ago into Australia. They're not sort of natural in the way that they evolved from here, but they did were brought here roughly about that, you know, 40 to 65,000 years ago, somewhere there. Um, yeah. Koalas are vulnerable. Okay, so they're listed officially as a vulnerable species. They're probably way more than vulnerable. They're probably endangered because um, Australia is not really preserving its eucalypts woodland um, habitats very well because uh, people want to develop and build houses and not preserve woodlands. And roads and buildings obviously kill koalas and all that sort of stuff. And people having animals, you know, like pets kill koalas and, yeah, stupid people being stupid kill koalas. Um, Australia, among many threats to the existence, uh, habitat destruction, you know, urbanisation, droughts, bushfires and climate change, okay? And it's endangered now. It's been listed since 2022 as endangered, which is hardly a surprise, okay, because it is. Koala is an Aboriginal word. Uh, koala comes from the Durangula, meaning no water, although the value was originally written in the English as uu in the spelling, such as kula or kula. And the spelling aid became oa, and the word is now pronounced in two or three spell syllables. Okay. Um, this is how sort of koalas sort of possibly evolved over time. Koalas uh, is classified with wombats, as we've already talked about. 
and several extinct families, including marsupial tapirs, marsupial lions, giant wombats of the suborder Vombatiforms within the order Diaprontodontia. Okay. And koala lineage possibly branched off around 40 million years ago during the Eocene. Koala is the only living um, member or the extant member of this order Phascheolactidae, a family that includes several extinct means, no longer living genera and species. During the Oligocene and Miocene, koalas lived in rainforests and had more generalised diets. So changing environments and what was available is what changed their diets. Okay. And now they are, because they are so specialised in their diets can eat, they are critically endangered. Okay, and that's mostly human fault there. Prehistoric koalas. Some species such as, I'm not even going to say this, some species of prehistoric koalas were around the same size as the modern koalas, while others were one and a half to two thirds its size. Some were larger, some were smaller, I think is what it's trying to say. Like modern species, prehistoric koalas had well-developed ear structures, also suggest they made long distance vocalizations and a relatively inactive lifestyle. Miocene. During the Miocene epoch, the Australian continent began drying out, leading the decline of rainforests and the spread of open eucalyptus woodland. So during the Miocene epoch, this is probably why koalas um, and their ancestors started becoming more only eating eucalyptus woodlands. Although um, why they're endangered now is definitely human's fault because we're destroying the eucalyptus woodlands. Uh, more on the evolution of koalas in general, the genus Phascolacticus split from Litocola koala in the late Miocene and had several adaptions that allowed it to live on a specialised eucalypt diet. This occurred by a shifting of the palate during the front of the skull, upper teeth lined by thicker bone, molars located in relatively low Compared the jaw joint and with more chewing surface, small fetigoid fossa and large gap separating incisors to take the molars. So their jaw, the mouths and teeth change to eat more eucalyptus leaves. Okay, and other things change so they could subsist on eucalyptus leaves, so they could, you know, tolerate the toxin. Okay, so koalas or Facplosaurus may have emerged as a dwarf form of the giant koala, which is that, following the disappearance of several large giant animals in the late Pleistocene. A 2008 study questions this hypothesis that during the late Pleistocene, the major difference in the morphology of the teeth. So, yeah, okay. Fossil record of the modern koala extends back to the least middle of the Pleistocene. There you go. Genetics and variation. The three subspecies recognised are the Queensland koala, New South Wales koala, and the Victorian koala. Okay. These forms are distinguished by their pelage. Pelage just means their fur and thickness, so fur colour and thickness, body size and skull shape. Difference between koala, obviously. The Queensland koala is the smallest of the three with silver or grey short hairs and a shorter skull. The Victorian koala is the largest with shaggier brown fur and a wider skull. Koala status. The geographic limits of these variations are based on state borders and the status of subspecies is currently disputed. Although there's a lot of genetic uh, studies and more studies going into this. Um, yeah, so there's been limited gene flow between local populations too. Okay, well, there you go. There is very low genetic diversity amongst koalas, uh, have high levels of interbreeding, so that's what that means, and low genetic variation, okay? And this may have been caused by declines in the population during the late Pleistocene, okay? As I said, gene flow is limited. Um, Rivers and roads have been shown to limit gene flow, roads that we are responsible for and rivers some we are responsible for, and contribute to the isolation of southeast 
Queensland populations. Okay, they have fully sequenced the koala genomes and they've done that multiple times at different koalas now. Characteristics, koalas are robust animals with large head and vestigial non-existent tail. Body length of, I've already gone into this, 60 to 85 centimetres, 4 to 5 kilograms, making it one of the largest arboreal, which means tree-dwelling marsupials. Okay. Koalas are sexually dimorphic, with males 50% larger than females. Males are further distinguished from females by their more curved noses, the presence of chest glands, and visible as bald patches. The female's pouch opening is secured by a sphincter which holds the young in. Koala pelage, as I said, its fur is denser on the back and it colored, changes from light grey to dark brown. Belly fur is whitish on the, and the rump is mottled. Koala has distinctly most effective insulating back fur of any marsupial. It's highly resistant and resistant resilient to wind and rain while the belly fur can reflect solar radiation. Well there you go. Koala claws have they have curved sharp claws well adapted to climbing and holding on to trees. The large forepaws have two opposable as in opposable digits which are opposite to the other three and allows them to grip smaller branches. Okay. Their hind paw so this is their front paw and hind paw. And in the hind paws, the second and third digits, so as you can see here, are fused, which is typical, and the attached claws function like a comb. All right, and the front, you can see the sort of front paw, they've got these two ones to hold on to here, so it's like their two fingers here can hold on with that. All right. They've got thigh muscles anchored further down the shin bone, increasing its climbing power. The robust skeleton, um, longer upper limbs that contribute to its ability to scale trees. Koalas have relatively small brains compared to other mammals. And it's pretty light. Um, the brain surface is smooth and considered primitive, as in more ancient. Does not entirely fit up the cranial cavity, and like most mammals, is large and is lightened by large amounts of cerebrospinal fluid. This is just so the koalas probably, um, if they fall or knock their heads, which is probably a risk for planting, being up trees, they probably won't hurt themselves fatally. The fluid checks the brain. And it's possible that uh, the brain when an animal falls into a tree, which is probably one of the main things. And this quite a small brain size may be an adaption to the energy restrictions imposed by its diet, which is insufficient to support a larger brain. So its diet probably also um, kept its brain size small. Koalas have limited abilities, considering to other mammals, because of its small brain. It has limited ability to perform complex unusual behaviors it will not eat plucked leaves on a flat surface which conflicts with its normal feeding routine so you have to put eucalyptus leaves up a tree if you want koalas to eat pretty much because it won't eat them otherwise they can't koala description hee <laughs> okay big ears four you know legs or hands four limbs Full paws, has a small, broad, dark nose with good sense of smell, is known to sniff the oils of individual branchlets to uh, assess their edibility. So we will smell the leaves to see if it can eat them. Small eyes are unusual amongst marsupials with that the pupils have vertical slips and adaption to living a more vertical plane. Okay, so vertical means up and down, horizontal means that way. Because koalas live like that, that's the eyes have adapted to that. Don't ask me, but that's what. Koalas have very good hearing. The round ears provide it with good hearing, and it has a well of developed middle ear. Koala larynx is located relatively low in the vocal tract and can be pulled down even further. Possess unique folds in the soft palate. And typical addition to vocal folds of the larynx. 
they produce deeper sounds than otherwise would be possible for their size. So there you go. Koalas can make good sounds. Koalas have other adaptions, uh, especially for its poor toxic and fibrous diet. Uh, animal's dentition, which is a teeth, consists of incisors and cheek teeth in a single premolar and full molars. Uh, you know, classical of herbivorous mammals. The koala bites a leaf with its incisor and clips it with premolars at the petiole before chewing it to pieces with cuspid molars. Koalas may also store food in their cheeks, pouches, before it's ready to be chewed. The partial worn molars of koalas in their prime are optimal for breaking the leaves into small particles, resulting in efficient stomach digestion and nutrient absorption in the small intestine, which digests the koala leaves to produce most of the animal's energy. Koalas sometimes regurgitate the food into its mouth and may chew it a second time. Koalas are one of the many symbols of Australia because of their distinctive appearance and they were at one time hunted by Indigenous Australians and they also depicted in myth and cave art for millennia, thousands and thousands of years. There you go. The koala geographic range is over a million kilometres squared and ranges throughout mainland eastern and southern Australia, including the states of Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria and South Australia. And koalas were introduced to, into northern, uh, some by nearby islands. And the population on Magnetic Island represents its northern limit range. Koalas do get most of its water from leaves, but it doesn't mean they don't need water at all. You can see koala drinking water and sometimes koalas will ask humans for water, especially They've not been able to eat. Um, although, as I said, you know, they will drink water on the ground or from people. This is more signs of koalas here, just here. This depiction of a koala and more koalas. Okay, so that's all about koalas.